I, uh, <laughs> I was one of Mr. Isham's students. Mary Floyd had all my children in school. So it's just really special to just kind of talk about all the things that I remember, and I'm sure they remember more than I do. <laughs> but anyways, I would like to introduce Mary and Mr. Isham. Take it away, ladies. <laughs> call me Mr. Isham. <laughs> Bucky. Bucky Grant Isham. Yes. Okay. So, she just messed up my things here. <laughs> okay, so we obviously have a very special guest, and but I'm going to talk about way back schools before we get to the part that Bucky was so so instrumental in doing. So, um, so here I have a very fuzzy picture. Hello, Chuck. Come on in. Buck, how are <laughs> There's you? Bucky. I'm okay. Watch out. Should we, maybe we, they should all introduce themselves, Bucky. You think they should? I don't know. We know them all, but do they all know each other? Shall, we, shall they all introduce themselves first? No? <laughs> what? I don't know anybody here. <laughs> well, I think you should. I'm Kathy Stratton. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is my husband, Fred. Good job, Kathy. And who is this man? I don't know I him. Don't know. Floyd Best. Okay. I lived in Bethel Gilead. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And Fred's been introduced. Eric Webb. Robert Geichel. <clears throat> Keith Holman. Chuck's not paying attention. Chuck's yelling. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I'm talking to Brock. Yes. <laughs> Margaret Ketchum. Eric Richardson. Chuck Adams. Sandy Adams. Mary Swartz. Danny Dover. Uh, Joanne Wood. Danielle Galbraith. Don Conan. Okay, and way back there we have? Scott Cleveland. Susan Cleveland. Okay, welcome. So, oh, you came in late. You still have to introduce yourself. Guy Best. Okay, you're related? Yes, yes. Wonderful. Wait. <laughs> and here comes Mr. John Dumville. So he won't have to introduce himself. I hope not. <laughs> okay. So um, I wanted to talk to you about the early, early schools. And so um, I have kind of a fuzzy picture here. Uh, Craig and I looked for a copy, a better copy of it yesterday, but we couldn't find it. So let's pass that around, Bucky. All right. And I'm going to read you an excerpt. It says, another old landmark passes. Work, and I get nervous sitting in front of people, so. Work has begun last week under C.H. Dustin as foreman in making the improvements in Main Street near the old brick schoolhouse opposite the underpass. The building which jutted into the road has been taken down and the road both straightened and widened. Thus passes another landmark from the village. It is supposed that the building was erected about 1810 from brick made from the Adams Kiln, earlier known as um, the brickyard of Jonathan Marsh, who lived at the head of Church Street. There were then two school districts in the village District number three was the Southerly District, and the children went to school at this brick schoolhouse. This would be down here by the wall. Um, District five was located on Church Street and Pleasant Streets, and the pupils attended school in a building at the northeast intersection of Church and Pleasant Streets. This building was on the northerly, northeasterly side of the ravine that goes through the Diana Chapman Place, anybody remember that? <coughs> Presently known as the Dingle, very close to the bank and back some 30 feet from the road. In 1852, the two districts united and built a new school, very near the site of the present Whitcomb High School on the Common. And this information came from the Bethel Courier in 1926. The picture above, which is on that, which is this picture here, yeah. Um, is an old sketch of the new school of 1852, which was sold at auction and subsequently became the very large red barn on the Jones Place near Locust Creek. You know where that is? Over where the Poplar Manor was? Yeah. Okay. 
and then um, on the back side it shows it shows a and this is another picture of that which I'll pass around in a minute. So school districts three near South Main and River Street near the underpass merged with school district five which was up there on Church and Pleasant Street. They united in 1852 and built a new school at the Common which is the one this one which is still not there anymore. <laughs> Oh, and, and there's an interior view of that school, too. This is what you mean? Yeah, that was the school which was one of the first schools on the common. Okay. Yeah, that's a sketch. <laughs> yeah. And over here is another drawing of it, and that's an interior view of it. Okay. And that's a, yeah. Yeah. You want me to pass that around? Sure, please. <coughs> Okay, so this article actually was written by Lisa Campbell, who is uh, now the president of the library. And it says, the origins of Whitcomb High School can be traced back 126 years. That was when this was written, which I forget was a few years ago. In 1890, Albert Whitcomb arranged to bequeath $30,000 to the town of Bethel for the purpose of building a high school with the stipulation that it be named Whitcomb High School. That's where the name came from. Even though the money was not available until Whitcomb's sister died several years later, there are references to the name Whitcomb High School as early as 1892. And here is the first graduating class from Whitcomb High School. That was 1897. Just yesterday. <laughs> Even before my time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Okay. I think this came from um, Dick McCormick's grandfather's scrapbook. These pictures here. I think that's in the that was in the Historical Society. And Dorothy Grady was his daughter. Dorothy McCormick Grady. Do any of you remember her? Yeah. Um, And it says here, this is that first school that I just showed you a picture of. And the person who had the scrapbook wrote, built in front of the high school above, thus blocking our baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> the grades were in this building, that little building, the little building you see here, um, built in 1904, 05, and opened in time for my last term, which was the spring of um, 1905. And Dorothy, I'm pretty sure he's referring to Dorothy Grady, taught here, taught English here in 1939. So then we get to the school that most of you remember on the common, probably, if you remember, if you were here. What, Chuck? You're old enough. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> That's this one. And it was very, it was a big deal for Bethel. And I'm going to just describe to you a little bit about what went into building it. $30,000 was what Mr. Whitcomb gave for its building, which $20,000 was supposed to be for the building and another $10,000 for the upkeep, which would have been a sizable amount of money then. Um, the cut granite stills and steps are to be of Bethel granite. The glass area of the schoolroom is equal to one-fourth of the floor space. The light entering from the left and the rear of the pupil. The building is to be two stories in height above a finished basement. On the first floor are four schoolrooms, um, each having book closets for the use of the teachers. The entrances are on either side of the building, first entering the porches. And I'm sorry about this. I do have a, a tremor, and when I get nervous, it gets worse. In the basement are located the boys and girls gymnasiums, boys and girls sanitaries, also lunchrooms with a serving room 
In the basement are furnaces, coal bins, etc. The exterior of the building is to be of selected red brick along the bottom with granite trimmings for the foundations. Um, the blackboards in the schoolrooms will be of slate, four feet wide. And I remember them. Did any of you go to school there? Yeah. Yes. Who did? Yes, Chuck, did you? Yeah. And so, um, I'm not going to, I didn't read the whole thing, by the way. <laughs> but that's what, that was the plan for the school. And actually, the plan is a three page description. They were very proud of what they were doing. So these views are of the whole town. And you can see the, um, the fairgrounds there. And then that's the first school and then the newer Whitcomb High School. Was this, was this uh, whole thing completed? And yes, and okay. I believe it was 1905, four okay. or five. Because yep. it's changed from. Yeah, that was the design, the drawing. Yeah, that was. Oh, and um, this is the barn that this, this mm -hmm. building was changed into over on Locust Creek on the back side. Yeah. And then more, showing the, the building. And this was a song, the Whitcomb High School song. It's pretty serious stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there somebody here who could sing that? <laughs> <laughs> We're winning. <laughs> <laughs> did you teach in the old school? I did. I and if, if you still want to hear me talk at the end, I brought a description of my first class of first graders. And they are in their late 60s. <laughs> and then here's a colored version. Can you sing the song, Mary? What's that? Can you sing the song? It's way before my time. I didn't know how long they came. Okay. So, um, I started... What? Did Judy Dutton write that song? It says on the back of the paper what it... What I think it does. Does it say who wrote the song? There's music written in 1930 by Ernest Kittredge, lyrics by Charles Dimmons and Chester Ellis. Do you remember them, Marguerite? No. <laughs> Did you say Richard Ellis? No. Chester Ellis and Charles Dimmons. Okay. So I came to Bethel in 1967 because the superintendent of schools came to South Rosen where I was teaching, uh, doing my student teaching, and he said, did I want a job? And I said, no thanks, <laughs> because I had lived in Randolph. My family was from South Royalton, and I'd worked my way through college at Tozier's. And I thought, I really need to expand my horizons. <laughs> but I was graduating in January, and... Um, I thought, I have to go out and find a job. And so I took the job, and I'll describe it more to you later if you're still interested at the end. But it was, and I taught 28 years here and nowhere else because Bethel was such a terrific community, I think. So we. Which grade did you teach first grade? I taught first grade. I thought it was first because Queenie Bird was teaching second Yes, she was. And I have a picture of her square dancers, too. Yeah. <laughs> Were you one of those square dancers? Probably. I remember doing a lot of square dancing. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, it was quite an experience. <laughs> and I learned a lot from those, from the teachers. So we have a very special guest here. Bucky, you want to tell them when you came to Bethel? Well, I, got, I got probably more than I should tell. I bet they're interested. But, <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank Robert Geico for bringing me down and I expect you'll be taking me home. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't driven for over two years. In fact, I don't even have a car anymore. But I also want to thank Kathy Day. 
Kathy was a former student many years ago. And Kathy, I want to congratulate you for not just this meeting, but for the other ones that you've put on. And I also thank you for the meals that are delivered to me on Tuesday, uh, the first Tuesday of every month, except for July and August. I miss them. <laughs> uh, and Mary Floyd, of course. Um, Mary and I worked together for many years. So I'm, I'm just going to better put my glasses on. Um, seven months ago, I turned 90. So if I get the dates mixed up or anything mixed up, don't hesitate to correct me. Chuck or Eric. Um, many students during my 35 years of teaching in the Bethel schools, and I'm going to read some names, and I just picked these out. Uh, Wally Martin, Robert Noble, who was my first principal, he was here one year. Willie Goodwin, a lot of you people, the most janitor. of you won't know these people. The janitor, correct? He was a janitor. Yes, Kurt Lamberton, mm -hmm. remember Lil Curtis? Yep. Yep. Hot ones. Bob Leister, Margaret Putney, mm -hmm. Bob Hyde, Robert Trash, John Durfee, Barbara Wood, and I could list countless others. I have a list in this folder of every graduate from Wickham High School from 1924 till 2004. So if you don't remember who your classmates were, uh, those of you that went to Wickham, uh, I can show you, refresh your memory. Um, also, it's, it's kind of sad to think that many of the people I worked with over these years and many students are no longer with us. And that makes me sad when I think, as I said here, putting these thoughts together. Uh, a lot of those people came to mind. Uh, 1955, I was a senior at Linden Teachers College in Lindenville, and Wally Martin came up to the school. He was looking for a 7th and 8th grade teacher and a coach to coach basketball, baseball. So go fishing with. And, well, we did. <laughs> but anyway, um, he also wanted a fourth grade teacher. And my wife, Beverly, had graduated a year ahead of me. But we met Wally up at the college, and he wanted us to come to Bethel. We had no idea where Bethel was, <laughs> not the slightest. We just said, well, We'll find out. So we came to Bethel in 1955. I have a copy. In fact, I've got all 35 contracts that I signed for the town of Bethel. <laughs> but this is the first one. And it's agreement between Grant A. Isham of East Concord, Vermont, where I was born and grew up, and the school directors of Bethel ID, Independent District. Mr. Hysham agrees to teach in the district of Bethel, and said board agrees to hire a teacher for the school year beginning 1955 through 1956, not more than 170 days, not less than 170, or more than 175. This is kind of mind-boggling, but remember it's 1955. The annual salary rate, rate shall be 
$100. And that included the coaching. <laughs> Boys basketball and baseball and girls basketball. And uh, it was signed, this contract was signed by Margaret Putney, Manuel Miller, and Delbert Stearns. They were on the school board that when we came to Bethel. So that's the story on that. Also in 1955, when we came, uh, the rural schools were still keeping. There were still schools, and I can't remember every all of them probably. But uh, uh, Camp Brook, uh, Bethel Olympus, yeah. East Bethel, of course, uh, you got them all probably. I don't know. I can't remember all of them. And I remember a few of the names. I remember Dot Hyde in East Bethel, who came to Bethel to school to uh, teach. Uh, there was a Mrs. Rogers, I think, at Camp Brook. Emma Campbell, who some of you will remember. So in 1955 through 1957, those two years, all the activities were held in the town hall. Whether it was a concert, Christmas program, graduation, or a basketball game. They were all held in that room at the, where the town hall is now, or was, has been, but it's been revised some. Um, the shop was on Main Street in Bethel somewhere. Yeah, you know, where was it, Fred? Huh? Where was it? Down underneath the uh, Clifford uh, building there. Okay, all right. I, I know it was, it was downtown somewhere. Um, the, in 19, I think the fall of 1957, the new school was completed over on Pleasant Street High School. I was in the, I taught seventh and eighth grade, and I was in the upstairs back room in the old school. There were, four rooms on the first floor and four on the second floor. And I was in the uh, upper one next to the river uh, for those two years. When the high school moved over to Pleasant Street, so did the seventh and eighth grade. So then I went over there. Um, all the students, because they, with the high school being over there, all those students from the local uh, rural schools were brought into uh, Bethel School because they had the room for the, all those kids. And I'm jumping ahead some, but in 1969, uh, Bev and I left for two years uh, 67 through 69 because we had a daughter with a health problem and we moved up to Shelburne, Vermont to be closer to the uh, university hospital up there in Burlington. And uh, Wally Martin came up after I'd been there two years. He wanted me to come back to Bethel. And uh, Clara Abbott, who many of you know, uh, was principal and teacher, but she didn't want to be principal anymore. So I came back with my family. We had three children. Came back to Bethel as principal. That was 1969. In the fall, of 1971, Beverly and I went to the teachers' convention uh, at Burlington, Vermont. We came home from the convention 
Hadn't been home very long, and I got a phone call from Jules D'Agostino, who was the high school principal. And he said, the elementary school is on fire. And what do you suggest that I do? Uh, get out. And I said, the first thing I'd like you to get out uh, is the file cabinet with all the records of the school record. So that was done. Um, it was a very sad time in my career at Bethel. Much shuffling, we went, classes were held in the Catholic school basement, in the Episcopal parsonage. Um, I can't remember, um, because the white church still had- Jones's house. Uh, yeah, and- At the bottom of- mm -hmm. Where? Jones's, it was- um, Shirley. Shirley Jones. Yeah, Shirley. She was a kinder house. kindergarten teacher, yeah. and she had yeah. the kindergarten. She had a class there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, after I think I'm not sure about this, but I think eventually they cut off the top of the yes. building, yep. and they we had the four rooms downstairs, hmm. and moved in two mobile trailers in the parking lot by the white church. And uh, those became classrooms also. And um, so um, 1973 or 74, I'm not sure, uh, they built the new elementary school on the end of the high school over on Pleasant Street. 74, okay. Thank you, Chuck. It was completed in 74. And um, so it was moved over there. And during that period of the fire, it's the staff, all the teachers, anybody connected, and the staff of the school deserve much, much credit because it was, it was a nightmare, really to try to keep school going uh, after that fire. So a lot of people need a lot of credit. Rose Fumigelli and I were in the, op the big room in the white church with 50 students. Yeah, oh yeah. And it didn't have the acoustics it has now. It was interesting. <laughs> and, and one thing I forgot to mention back earlier is that when those um, rural schools were still going, all the kids in town, Bethel, walked to school. There was no buses because there was a lot less traffic then and uh, uh, it was a lot safer then for them to be walking than it would be today. And I don't remember when they started running the buses to pick up kids in, in the town but eventually they did. And uh, so after, um, in 1982, her daughter, Susan, passed away in 81. And I stayed on as principal for a year. And in 1982, I just did not have the heart to continue as principal. Clara Abbott was in the library, we called it Resource Center, and uh, she retired. So I asked the school board, I said, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be principal anymore, but I still want to deal with kids. And um, how about I take Clara's place in the library resource center? And they agreed, so I went to UVM and took, I don't know, whatever courses I needed to get certified as a librarian. And uh, so the last 10 years, uh, 82 to 92, that's where I spent my time. And I retired in 1992.
So that's a summary. And it is called the Grant Isham Library. Yeah. Well, the school. Yeah, you would yes, mention is. that. <laughs> yep. That was kind of an honor to have that big sign, Grand Ocean Library, put up in the library. But I've got several pictures here uh, that I can pass around. And I don't know whether anybody's here out of this class. This is a grade six class of 1916-61. You can pass that around. Is Scott Putney here? No, he isn't. No? no. Okay. He's, that's his class, I believe. Uh, um, what? Gary was in that class. Gary? Then. Yeah, Gary's Gary's there. there. Gary yeah. Oh, yeah, Gary. Yeah, you're, you're, you're there. Yeah. Oh, right. uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> cool. That uh, is a picture of, I don't know what year this was, faculty. So, I'll just read the name. Dorothy Bent, Helen Chap, Irene Cushing, Rachel Osborne, Anita Shepard, Carolyn Simmons, Reg Alexander, you guys will remember him, Richard Ellis, and Grant Isham, Kurt Lambert and Principal, and Ray Pluta, and Charles Rising. Those were the faculty at that particular time, whenever it was. And Here's a picture of the class of 1961. You can pass that around. Um, reunion. Uh, I was take, you can clarify that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. Take, when I <laughs> <laughs> take, take them on. Uh, the steps of the white church. I got a better picture. I got a, a better picture than that. But, uh, but anyway, so if anybody has any questions or comments, Mr. Mr. Isham, can you can you talk about how how did you the like the basketball like you you played basketball games in the town hall? Oh yeah. So full court, court, half court. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, the if you hit, if you hit the wall under the basket, you're out of bounds, <laughs> <laughs> and you could shoot from one foul shot, one foul line, to the basket on the other end, <laughs> and you had to keep it low because of the ceiling. But, but uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine. Hard to imagine. But every town in the area or the whole state had basketball courts that were small. You know, they were town halls or whatever. And uh, it was, I remember over in Groton, they had a heating pipe that went right around and you, you, you know, you get up close to that and it was kind of hot. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Rochester had, what'd they have? I can't remember the name of the, they had a name for the court up there before they built the new school. But times were different. Yeah. It just, uh, and of course. That heat downstairs either. What? When you change that clothes. Yeah, oh, yeah. No heat. No. no heat. Get the hell out of there. Yeah. <laughs> no loitering. But, uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was a different day and age. And, uh, because I've lived long enough to see a whole lot of changes. Some are really good, some are not so good. But that's the way it is. And uh, it's... Uh, Probably Robert remembers this. You were playing basketball in the new, new gym over there? Yeah. You told Bruce Stern, he says, you, I'll show you how to jump and dunk a ball. <laughs> and Bucky went up and dunked the ball, and he hung right there on his wedding band. <laughs> and we went in the shop and had to cut it off. <laughs> yeah. He was hanging up there. Oh, but yeah. That, was, that wasn't my wedding band. It was my class ring. Oh, class ring. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I said, that's what you get for trying to show off. And, <laughs> but I couldn't get him to jump. He wouldn't. No, he wouldn't jump. Uh, uh, 
I remember when Bucky first came to town because he rented my father's apartment upstairs. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was about 10 yeah. at that time, 1955. Yeah. And uh, I took a look outside and I said, man, he's got to be the tallest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty tall at that time. And well, I still am. I know. 6'3". He could easily hold two sixth grader boys up like this. Yeah. <laughs> and bang their heads together. <laughs> <laughs> Discipline was a little different in those days. <laughs> and there was a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. Actually, a great, uh, I have a great story related to what he just said, Mr. Reisham. Uh, um, you came into to our classroom to do the library like, silent reading time, and um, you caught me talking to one of my friends, <laughs> whispering. I thought I was being quiet, but I, I whispered something to one of my friends. All of a sudden, I felt myself levitating in the air. <laughs> you, you picked up my chair by its back two legs, and I'm just floating it. <laughs> like I'm on you know, two stories high. You moved me over to where I couldn't talk to my friend anymore and put me down. <laughs> Very gently, right? Tell yeah. me your name. Jeremiah Smith. Yeah. Jeremiah yeah. Smith. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This was probably. I'm sorry I did yeah, that. Mid, mid yeah. to late 80s. <laughs> No, it was, it's one of my favorite stories about yeah. it. <laughs> it's a good memory. Yeah. Yeah. Did you whisper again? No, I was, I was good after that. <laughs> well, if you want a few stories from me? What's that? Want a few stories from me? What? Go ahead. Sure. Sure. Why not? I, uh, my name's Chuck Seeley. I was principal of Wickham from 74 to 77. And I was high school principal. I uh, had Eric as a student. This guy was too young. He was just in grade school when I was principal. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Bucky was the first man I met when I came to school. He was principal of the elementary school, and I was principal of high school. It was the first year that the high school was open. And uh, we were best buddies, and he got along really well. He's one of the nicest people. You all know him, one of the nicest people you ever met. But uh, you're talking about some of that stuff. The first day, I was uh, assistant principal at Windsor High School in Windsor, Vermont. And that was a tough school because they were, it was a prison town. And prison towns were always tough. But I had come from a school in New Jersey, which was a ghetto school. And that, that was, Unbelievable. My teachers got their car smashed and all that stuff. Never bothered me. Talk with a guy named Dick Vital, if you ever heard of him. Yeah. But, uh, I've known him since he's been 10 years old. And we taught together for a year at this elementary school. And then I came to Vermont, got to Bethel after being assistant down there in Windsor. And it was the first day of school. Everybody, I always wore a suit and tie. Bucky, you always wore a suit and tie, didn't you? Always. You see these people today, you know, they look like bums off the deal of me now, you know, bums off the street. <laughs> but we dressed up really good, and we always did, okay, that's just the way it was back then, yeah. right? I so, never went to school without a tie, except if we were having a field day. Oh, I wore a leisure suit for one time, a couple of times that one year, and I felt so funny yeah. because I didn't have a tie on. And that was, I don't know, that was in like 1980 or whenever the leisure suits were in, I wasn't in. Anyway. First day of school, bell rings, first period, and there's a fight in the hallway. Two guys are going at it, right? My first day, and it's Homer Rogers and Irving Cornell. And Irving passed away quite a few years ago. He was young. Steve Cornell. What's that? Steve Cornell or Irving Russell? Steve Cornell. Okay. Steve Cornell. He was the big one. He was, he was a lot bigger than I was. Right. And they were fighting in the hallway. So I grabbed them. I don't know if you could do this today, but anyway, I grabbed him, brought him into my room, and pulled the shade down, closed the door so Bucky's wife, who was my secretary, couldn't hear anything, and started swearing at him and screaming at him, and said this wasn't going to happen in my school. And then I said, you're going to be suspended for three days. This was the Homer was first, right? And Homer had a little smile, like, you know, he wanted to be suspended, uh, in the closet. I remember the closet right across from my, my office? Put them in the closet for three days with books. I said, when you've got to go to the bathroom, you just pick your head out, and Bev will let you go to the bathroom. 
So now I call in Irving, right? And I'm look, I'm, you know, I'm six three, and Irving's up here, right? So I had, sit him down right away, and I start swearing and yelling at him, right? And he starts crying like a baby. Oh, the tears are coming down his face, and just crying, right? And and so I, I pulled back a little bit, right? And I waited for about half an hour because I didn't want to see all this kids in school to see Irving was crying and then I put him in the other closet for three days <laughs> and for that year anything that went on was that were you my first year or second 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 okay then my first year anything that happened in that school underground who was doing drugs who was doing this who was with whom I knew because those two guys were squealing on me. Right? <laughs> they were the toughest guys in school, but they were they were they were my little cronies that would you know, but I never told I couldn't tell never tell anybody, but I knew everything that was happening. Well they lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Anyway, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did not do that. But you started in fifty five for thirty one hundred dollars. I was in the city, okay? In 1963, when I started, for $3,800. <laughs> so you were a hell of a lot better off up here than I was down there, because it was certainly more expensive to live down there. My uh, first salary okay. in 1967 as a teacher, things had gotten better, I guess, I got $5,000. That was good. Yeah. That was good those days. Yeah. yeah. So was that good money? It was good money. I had everything I needed, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I have, I have my... What happened? Uh, Inflation, I, I my, guess you can blame uh, it to that. Another contract that I picked out. This one is for uh, 63 to 64. July, starting July. And the annual salary was 5500 Now this was before the teachers' union. Wally Martin would come. And you'll notice on that, he had a number in there. And I said, well, if you can't do any better than that, I guess I'll go down and work for Art Cheney in South Rowland. He was the superintendent. <coughs> and uh, because he'd like me to come down there. So while he takes the contract and goes away, crosses it out, and then came 5500 $200 raise. What year was that? That was... 63. Okay. 63 and 64. And uh, so, <laughs> and I've also got my last contract. I'll read that to you. Remember, that's 30 years later. My last contract with Town of Bethel was 30,120. That was 1992. Inflation. <laughs> and uh, well, and he was 30, so good. Thirty years, <laughs> yeah. And uh, but, and I had many days of sick leave. Build up, but they only paid me for thirty. <laughs> so, <laughs> for you people who didn't know Wally Martin, he was a great guy. I mean, he was just. Oh come on, John. He was Jack. a superintendent. <laughs> He was. He was a nice guy. Uh, Who was that? But Wally Martin. Oh, Wally, yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you want to find him, you had to go down to the White River, uh, you know, at noon because that, he was fishing down there. But uh, that he, he, was a, he was a real good guy. But anyway, I've been living up on Camp Brook for 50 years. And I got to talking to some of those people up there who used to go to the old Camp Brook schoolhouse. That's okay. where we lived. What's that? Yeah. We lived yes. right. for 46 years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you in a class you have Clarence Washburn, who I loved, his sister, who I never knew until she passed away, Geneva Geico, was Clarence Washburn's sister. I could not believe it. Okay, you had Harry Sargent, you had the Washburn kids. Okay, and they all were in the same. Can you imagine those kids in the same elementary school in a one-room schoolhouse? Unbelievable! If you know any of those people, they were just absolute characters. And uh, so you talk to some of the old people, older than me. I'm just 82, so I'm just a kid. Okay, but uh, you talk to some of the old people, and they, you know, they tell you stories you can't believe. 
And, and, and a lot of the stuff I get is through the obituaries in the White River Valley Herald. Who, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. All these people are, are interrelated, you know, and, and you know, it's just incredible. So anyway, the schools uh, were great. We had kids going to Harvard and all over the place, you know, when I was there. And I'm sure when, when Bucky was there and when Mary was there. So it didn't matter that a kid went to Bethel or he went to Burlington, okay? If a kid was smart, he got ahead in this world. And uh, the one-room schoolhouse, you know, the one that closed in Hancock, the last one, it, that was really sad to me. Okay, you know, I mean, it, it was just a nice building and a, a good heritage, you know, that's the way it used to be. Why, why can't it still be? Anyway, I can talk for four days, but I will. <laughs> great job. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. So this is a 1964 yearbook, which Kathy found here on the shelf. And there's Bucky as Prince. Is he principal here? Is he principal? Teaching. Teaching. Okay. There you are. Right there. Mary, what was your maiden name? Ryan. Yeah. And I did bring um, the booklet from the Historical Society oh, on yeah. the... Schools. So fast, I know. And I know Danny has some pic some pictures about, is it the Camp Brook School? Yeah. yeah, but we didn't have any old, I think we may have given some to the Historical Society. Okay, so if anyone wants to look at it, they're here. I passed around the, the districts, were there 13, I think, 13 districts? 15? Yep. Here's another note about Wally Martin, who was the superintendent for many years. After Wally retired as superintendent, he came to me and the high school principal, who was, I guess, Bob Leister, I can't remember, and uh, he wanted to be custodian. So I hired him yeah. <laughs> as the custodian for on the night shift. So here's the former superintendent, because janitor at the school. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I have a question. You know, a lot of times, uh, what I remember, my school years have, are linked to like really historical events. So, like the moon landing, that happened in July. So, of, of, of what year was it? 70, whatever, in the thing now. But, so you wouldn't have been in school. But I think of like, like Kennedy's assassination. That happened during the school day. In yes, it did. Do you, either of you have recollections of what that day was like and well, how your kids, how, I, did, how, did, how did you find out if there wasn't like social I, media back then? I what can't did, remember, Joanne, uh, I, about how I got to know, mm -hmm. but I went around to the classroom teachers to tell them. I didn't make any announcement to the kids. Mm -hmm. It was just to the teachers to let them know that 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 happened. It happened in November. Yeah. 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 I was in before Thanksgiving. I was uh, down in New Jersey teaching sixth grade my first year, and we had to go downstairs to the basement for music. And coming upstairs was Vital and his class, and he told me he said the president got shot. Yeah. And that's how yeah. I heard. I don't remember exactly yeah. where I was at the exact time. I was a college student oh, that year, 1963. Yeah. I was in Bucky's. When did you come to Bethel? You told me. 67. And he, and he did tell us. 67. 67. Um, and what, uh, January. what I remember is that we didn't okay. have Actually, probably was 68. Any comms or anything. Okay. We had yeah. what they called, I don't know what they, we, we worked in the office. We were like office aides. Mm -hmm. And I can remember an office aide coming, knocking on our door. I was, I don't know whether it was math or science. And she knocked on the door and gave the, the note to Mr. Eichen, and he read it to us. And then they let us go home. Oh. I was teaching, it was Krista McCullough, who was the woman who was in, and I, I'm terrible at remembering exact details, but when it, the a space, not spaceship, but the rocket yeah, exploded, exactly. that was, and the kids, they were very aware of it. There seemed to be a lot more communication, television mostly. So it, they were very aware of it. It was very challenging. Get back to Wally Martin. There was a guy who Bucky knows up in the Northeast Kingdom named Norm Lewis. 
Yeah. Remember Norm Buck? Yeah. Danny Gore. Danny Gore. Representative Danny Gore. He would go out and put this crazy outfit on yeah. with this real strong Vermont accent. He, run, he ran for governor for like 30 straight years. <laughs> <laughs> Never won or anything, but anyway, he was very, very similar to Wally Martin because I was going for an interview for a principal job and he said, you know, meet me at uh, Lake Willoughby at noon and I'll be there at the dock fishing. <laughs> so that's what, in those days, that's the way it was. Everybody was so relaxed and, you know, there was no pressure and, you know, it was just a different time, you know. So, Danny, you live in the Camp Brook School. Yes. Do you? Yeah, we've been there for 45 years. Do you have anything to do? No. Knew the which people? Which school was that, Ben? Camp Brook School. Three, three miles up Camp Brook on the left. Up near Clara's yeah, relative. Clara Clara's mother taught there. Yeah, right. Russell the, Randall Washburn. Was yes. Right. Okay. All right. I know. Yeah. 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 And there are still families in that area who, yes. whose children, I mean, they've always been there. The interest, I find the interesting thing about Bethel is that people have been here for generations. Generations. I mean, the families have been here for that long. And they're still here. Some it's, of the same families. You know, I said, maybe I said that when I was talking, but when Bev and I made that decision to come to Bethel and we didn't know where Bethel was, it's one of the best decisions we made during our whole married life was to come to Bethel. Because in 19, I live in Stockbridge now, but um, Bethel, this whole area is just, I can't say enough good about it. It yeah. just is so, I don't know, the people, um, some of you have moved in, uh, some of you have been here, born here, and uh, but it's just a great town. It is. And uh, I love it. I remember going to a uh, kindergarten at the house that you bought on North Main Street. Right. They call it Fountain right. Drive now, I call it Upper North Main Street, but it's between Johnny Hart's and John Durfee's. Yeah. Um, you know, we only used to go for a half a day. And Mrs. Brown, there. her name was? Was Mrs. it Mrs. Brown? Brown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you left, you always got a, a little candy corn. That was a happy pill. <laughs> and a happy pill. <laughs> and I, I distinctly remember um, that I was the last kid to, to figure out how to tie my shoes. <laughs> and, but we, we got to go home at, you know, at noontime and someone always got to be the leader. And that kind of carried over to grade school where we got to be on patrol. Oh, I meant to mention that. Yeah, and I, I, I had it in my notes. Too. You know, you got to, you got your, it was a sash and you had a badge on it. It was a belt kind of thing, right. wasn't it? Yeah, we yeah. Had a, I've seen pictures a, a of it. A belt and we had a captain which had a blue, blue badge and a lieutenant with a red badge. <laughs> yeah. and, their job was to take the little kids down across the bridge and like a crossing guard, get down there because they were walking. They never weren't picked up by bus back then. And uh, yeah, and at the end of the year, Eric, we used to have, uh, the state would put on a field day for all the people that were in the patrol. Huh? And wherever you'd have it, Montpelier or whatever. And, I remember uh, it was quite a, you, you felt pretty honored if you got oh, chosen to be on patrol. Oh, were, yeah. were you on patrol? Uh -huh. Yeah, I did get to. Uh, I, I never made captain. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's still captain. time. You're still here, that's I important. I also remember that um, you spoke of the Kennedy assassination, and uh, or actually you did, Joanne, but I remember, um, you know, in kindergarten, we got to go home for, you know, you went home, had lunch at home. So yeah. when I went to first grade, it, it was noontime, and I, I just 
walked right out the door and went home. <laughs> my, my mother came home for lunch from Clifford, and she said, well, what are you doing home? I said, lunchtime. And I went back, and I kind of got my ear spinned back because I wasn't supposed to leave school. They didn't know where I went. <laughs> I got home for lunch. That's crazy. <laughs> Does anybody know what year um, Bethel started having a kidney garden? Because I went to the Charlie Jones's I can, house. Yeah. Uh, Marion Brown ran, it was, I guess you'd call it kindergarten, but it was more of a daycare. Mm -hmm. um, and she had it, that house up on North Main Street. Mm -hmm. Well, they were going to be moving to Springfield. And they came to us and said, you know, maybe you'd like to buy this house. And because Bev being a teacher, um, anyway, we ended up buying it with a little help from Bev's father. Um, and she ran that school for uh, kindergarten for two years. And then I think after that, when we moved to Sheldon, uh, I think that's when they passed the public kindergarten. I think, Keith, but I'm not. That's probably when the school actually got one. And yeah, that's what certainly year would that have been? We left in 67. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the first kindergarten was in the new elementary school. It had to have been after 70 because I went to Shirley Jones's in 70, I think, 1970. Oh, yeah. I, I do know a mandatory, you know, making kindergarten a requirement throughout Vermont was Madeline, when Madeline Cunin was governor yeah. and uh, Barbara Wood, my mother-in-law, was in the legislature and that was one of her proudest moments yeah. was the yeah. signing. So that would have been like 83 or 84 that made All it that late. Yeah. Yeah. But individual towns were offering kindergarten right. before then, but it wasn't required. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Brown, I went to Mrs. Brown in the 50s. So I don't know when she That's on North Main. Yeah. Huh. We walked with her. Cost my mother $3. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Cost my mother $3 a week for me to go to the We had to be quiet because. Yes, Mr. Brown was asleep. He worked nights. <laughs> 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 he worked nights at the sauna. What did you say? <laughs> we had to be uh, real quiet, which I wasn't very good at. You know. <laughs> but because Mr. Brown worked nights. Oh, and he was sleeping. He, I think he worked down at <laughs> Bethel Mills on the sawmill at night. But I'm not positive of that. Um, maybe he didn't work there. I thought he worked down to Files He worked at Files and Lice. Okay. I think he worked at Files and Lice. Okay. So I remember having to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> what a because good way to keep the kids quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will work now. Candy <laughs> corn had to be a popular thing because I remember that at Shirley Jones's school, and she also had a witch. In her basement. That was the that was the big story when you went there. You know, there was a witch there. You all yeah, remember? Kind of a fun thing for the kids. Remember Miss Akins? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She her, was the her, uh, art daughter, teacher. Her granddaughter is a reporter for the Herald now. Um, Ann Akins, and she has a column quite often in the editorials. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that. I want to say it's her daughter, but... I don't think. I think it's like a niece or a nephew. Yeah, or not not a nephew. Daughter. That wouldn't work, but a niece. or She is a relative, but not direct. Okay. Mrs. Aiken was, when I was teaching, Mrs. Aiken came as, in as the art teacher. Yeah. And she was terrific. Just yeah. terrific. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Mrs. Aiken. It was a Ms. M Ms. Ms. Aiken. Yeah. yeah. Kids like to go to her house Halloween night. Halloween. Years later, I got a I got a picture back from um, Franny Bean's wife, Janice. Janice. And she, wasn't her maiden name Fleetwood? Yes. Yeah. And she gave me a picture that I had drawn. With, oh, she was an art teacher. Class. Um, and it was a, of a horse in a kind of a western scene, and the horse had six legs. Because <laughs> I wanted to make it look like it was running. You <laughs> advanced. Yeah. I did Miss Aiken's hair for a long time, and she brought me a whole folder of Fred's work. Oh. Wow, yeah. she had his work? She kept, she kept his stuff. Yeah. She lived right across the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bob, you were talking about and her, Miss Aiken. Yeah. Her husband, Rose Gumigalli, of course, was my aunt. She was a second grade teacher. And yes. Over at the old school. And when you when you were related, you had the uh, 
the honor of being able to clean the erasers and everybody else was playing on the plate. <laughs> I remember that pretty distinctly. And Paul, she was pretty um, strict as well. The ruler came out quite often on people's fingers. So, I don't think you're I talking ever... about Rose? Yeah, my aunt Rose, yeah. There's a picture. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I have a, a birthday card that Rose Fumigali sent to my grandmother that and she wrote a poem on it and I wish I brought it because <coughs> Rose was time to became, move became good friends in later years with the Florida thing and yeah. um, but Ms. Aikens, what was her husband's name? Forrest. Forrest. Right. And he was a state police officer, right? No. 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 no his, her daughter's daughter married a state trooper. Patrick, the last name was Patrick. Mm -hmm. yep. Did well, I not bring it? Mr. Aikens to them. Huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but her brother owned the property that we live in now. Shaw. Oh, yeah, they live yeah. right next door. Yep. I oh. thought I brought the square dancing picture, but I don't see it. Oh. But I'll make I sure. I make sure you'll get to see it. <laughs> I think I did. No, nope, maybe not. Oh, oh here it is. That was a Camp Brook one, right? I think. Isn't that what Bucky said earlier? That's part of the. That's the resource center. Whoops, you got the two of them there. I don't know what the oh, back is. I found it. Yeah. It does, it's not very clear. Uh, it yeah, might bring both. back fond memories. That's the uh, <laughs> library resource center. I don't at the know. Elementary you can't school. really tell. Uh, it's one uh, of those little uh, snapshots. The, you see yourself there at all? The school was, the elementary school was built around that resource center. Classrooms all went around the, and, and that was the center. And and we wanted that um, Joanne's mother-in-law and I went to Boston to pick out the furniture for that elementary school. And they had a, I don't know, a show down there. So we ordered, or she did, um, desks and chairs. And, Probably Barbara. She was strong-willed. Oh, yeah. She picked out the colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know we came back in a snowstorm, and I was going to offer to drive, but I said, no, I'm not going to argue with her. <laughs> <laughs> she was my boss for many years on the school board. So there's where they put me in the basement, Bucky. Do you remember that, of the old school? That was my room oh, in the basement. Down here? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I guess I don't remember and, um, it. Joanne, you were on the school board. I was on the school board. Yeah. 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 85 to 95. Yeah. yeah. And talk about regulations. They made the fire escape come out one of these windows here. And good thing I was small because the window was only about four feet high. But we had a fire escape and we came out. And that was the that basement was... picture. Two, two quick things I wanted to mention. When Barbara was on the school board, she would, she, took care of the finances, took care of the books. Mm -hmm. Literally, everything was in a shoebox. And it was like a check, she would write the checks out of a checkbook from like what was then like Proctor Bank or whatever. I mean, in a shoebox is how they kept track of bills and invoices. It's probably more secure in that than it would be today. Could, could be. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say this morning, this, uh, at lunchtime today, um, was the, the Wickham class of 60, 1967 their 57th reunion. And uh, I can't remember the last name of the guy, Frank, who is in that class, who every year organizes and gets in touch with all of the classmates of the class of 67. So there were like 14 people at Tozier's for lunch. Um, Ron Baturney, Ron, Ronnie Colton, oh, yeah. Denny Merrill, the spout, uh, and, you know, just that group to get together. And there were, the yearbook was being passed around. That's where we were talking about basketball. Yeah. And I mentioned about the talk tonight, every, you know, hoping that more people from that class would yeah. come. But they all send their best to you. Yeah, well, hey. I don't know. If you stay around long enough, you can, you 
come in touch with a lot of people. <laughs> and I certainly came in touch with a lot of students and teachers and administrators. And, and do they still call you Mr. Isham, most of them? Some of the students. I've got a letter here from Ellen Trask. I thought Ellen might be here tonight from her daughter um, that um, she wrote. She still calls me. She said, um, Mr. Aisha, I won't read the whole thing. Though I've been an adult for many years, you will always be Mr. Aisha to me. You were the principal all through my elementary years, 1970 to 76. I attended the old building in second grade, and I remember your office being up the stairs from the classroom. I used to feel that you were a giant. <laughs> and and uh, after we moved to the elementary school, new one, Mrs. Shack was the teacher. And uh, anyway, this gal became a teacher, and she just retired. A couple of years ago. Is that my classmate, Sally? Was Sally. Baker's, yeah. Baker's was she was she in your class? Yes. Yeah. 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 You're old. old guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, Keith. I didn't mean that. Uh, yeah. What school did she teach at? I'm not sure. Gilead. Gilead. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. It yeah, was she was Gilead my aunt. Gilead or Camber. It must have been Gilead. Gilead. Yeah. So yeah. the one right on the corner. By the right way. across from the church. Church, okay. Yeah, yeah. the brick. So I, my husband, Chris, had her as a teacher. And I was scary, huh? She was very scary. Yeah. I, I am 10 years younger than he is, and, and I had her in Bridgewater. And she wore a rubber hose around her neck. She was fierce. And if you didn't behave, you got that rubber hose. Mm. And I can remember one, one time crying, watching her. Um, she was whooping these kids, and they thought they were smart. They had put um, newspaper in their back pockets. <coughs> she emptied out their back pockets mm. before they got their rubber holes. She would give you some chances. The first time she ever talked to me, I just started crying because she scared me so much. Yeah. She kept saying, you're not in trouble, dear. You're not in trouble, dear. But that was back when they didn't do things. But you mind it. There was no question. You didn't give her any grief whatsoever. Bill Lamp. Yes. What? Bill Lamp. Yeah. No. He was an Air Force that came to teach, he taught in the fourth grade, I think, and he was a pretty strict guy. And he threw erasers, and if you misbehaved, you had to hold two dictionaries for recess. Like, the, <laughs> I didn't have to, but. <laughs> <laughs> you but you remember it. Right? Right? Yeah. 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 Who's speaking well, to me? Yes. husband Chris went to Bethel Gilead School. Say that again. My name is Gail Billings and I married Chris Gail. Billings. Yeah. You had the oxen. I do. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And I couldn't, I didn't he, place you. Um, went to Bethel Gilead School and when they closed the school and they all went to the new school in Bethel, his mom and I believe Bill Hodgkins um, were hired, he just told me who the, who the principal was, Mr. Trask, Robert Trask, I think he said was the, on the school board or something. But he yeah, and he drove the bus. Okay. Or yeah. probably the one bus is there. women to clean everything out and clean up stuff. Thank you. And asked what the, what the fee would be. And at first she offered to do it for free and he said, no, we can't do that. We have to give you something. Um, so she asked for this clock and this was on the wall. She has a picture and I'll find that but I only found out today that this was happening tonight. In Gilead? In Gilead. Cool. So and the deal 
was when she gifted it to Chris and I that when we are done with it or our children, it goes to the Bethel Historical Society. Oh, oh that's nice. So we took it to Charlie Schobeck and got it in running mm -hmm. condition. Um, nice. It was not working when she gave it to us, but, but it does work. So. Mm -hmm. But I'll cool. pass it around. Yeah. Yeah. The keys are in it. Don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pass it around either. Maybe you can just hold it, pass it around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll just put it on my desk and make oh, it yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's just uh, yeah. And I also brought this. Um, Was there a date on that? Could you find when you tried uh, uh, um, did it? Any kind of date when it was made? Gosh, I don't know. I didn't look. I came down here today and I met the lady that was working here and I saw your sign. And so I was telling her that we have this clock. I'm glad you she came said, back. Oh, you should come. <laughs> and my husband, unfortunately, is recovering from prostate surgery, mm -hmm. cancer surgery. So he didn't really feel up to coming. I've home. got a picture of your husband somewhere in my folder here. Yep. A class. His yep. class. I'm a very yeah. lucky girl. Chris. <laughs> Her husband worked at Valley Motors yep. for years yep. and years and years. And I had Mr. Arts. Dumbville as a student teacher when I was at Hartford High School. Wow. And he was student teaching. Small world. Yeah. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the school, but I did tell the lady I would bring it. Um, this also is going to the Bethel Historical Society. And I it's an Bethel's original... Yeah. Um, Bethel Mills Green Bag. Oh, neat. Yeah. You threw them away. Yeah. You threw them That's when they were 100 pounders. Yes. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. When I used to sell these down on South Main for 20 bucks, they call them African snake catching bags. Yeah. <laughs> Sold hundreds of them. <laughs> no, My husband um, and I actually bought a feed store. We ran a feed store yep. in Randolph mm -hmm. for yep. quite a few years. So we have, you know, we collected rain bags. And um, I believe this came from Emerson Strickland is who oh. gave it to us. It never opened the damn things. The strings? Years of doing it. Mr. Isham, is somebody I'm kind of surprised isn't here tonight, but I'm curious um, what year she started. It would be Martha Lawrence. She must have started about the same time as you did. We moved to, from the old school, when the high school was built, I mentioned the 7th and 8th grade went over there. <clears throat> I taught in that end room. Um, they've changed that now. It's I don't know, library or library. whatever. But uh, I was in the end room. Mrs. Richards, Bud Richards Trailer Park. Oh. She taught Isla? seventh grade. Isla Richards, I think okay. it was. Yep. Taught seventh grade, I taught eighth grade. And she retired. And they hired Martha Lawrence to come teach seventh grade. And uh, out, right out of Castleton. And uh, so she came. And uh, we, Martha would teach reading, writing, spelling, all that stuff. I'd teach the math and science and whatever else was left over. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so, and we were that way until, until I left to go to Shelburne. So there were just two teachers in seventh and eighth? There were just two teachers. Wow. Now, another tidbit for the elementary school, at one time in that resource center that I showed the picture, um, we had over 200, about 218 kids, K through six. Surrounded. It, yeah, remember we put up those portable, Yeah. we made that portable room in the right. resource center right. uh, to, to hold a classroom Right. because we had that many kids. Mm. And uh, it's hard to imagine now that there's no Whitcomb High School. There's, you know, I don't know how many kids are in the elementary, but um, 
I don't know. Oh. At one time, I, I had in eighth grade. One time, I had thirty kids. The classes are. Yeah, the classes are bigger now than they were in the last few years, I believe. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think my graduating class might have been thirty-four or five. It was over thirty. Yeah. yeah. And we had thirty-six. Yeah. So did we. We did too. We did too. How many of your graduating class buck from high school? This is funny. You know? Go ahead. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I always brag that I finished third in my class. <laughs> We were, <laughs> that was the story he gave me. Well, it was, uh, this is Concord, Vermont. And there were about 40 kids in the whole school. And there were four. When I started as a freshman, there were more. But uh, a lot of them dropped out. When they turned 16, they'd go quit school and go to work in the mill or whatever. And so I ended up with four. But... Uh, we, during my junior and senior year, we went to Barry Auditorium to the tournament. We had playoff and we won. We were runners up in the state uh, in 1950. Uh, Class C was ABC then. And we were runners up in the state tournament. And then uh, in That 50, was basketball? That was basketball. Yeah. Um, Where's Moose from? What? Where did he? Who did he play for? Remember Moose? You played against him. Oh, he wound up living at Lake Nescoma Lake. Died a couple of years ago. Oh, I don't know. Well, you knew him real well, but I probably yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, you're speaking that um, having. Go to work. I mean, Did you want those pictures to go to the historical oh, yeah. yeah. okay. okay. um, This is the booklet. When he was 16, <laughs> he went to work. That's just what 16 year old kids did. I yeah. Guess. yeah, a lot of them did. If it's, well, if you were the oldest one in the family, quite often that's what, what they had to do. Um, so he doesn't. He doesn't get to go to any class reunions, you know. I mean, he, he made mention of that this year that, you know, his wife, Sandy, you know, she can go and he can't. Who was that you were talking about? My father-in-law. Your father-in-law. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Or? Thank you all for coming. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to come because of my health problems, but I'm very glad that I did. We're glad. We're glad. And uh, I just, Fred, I noticed you got Crocs on. <laughs> Don't you talk to me about Crocs. <laughs> he, said, he says, I'll never wear a pair of Crocs. Dale says, look, look at that. Uh, He's got a pair of Crocs. That's what my slippers are now. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I think it's okay. I'll we'll just uh, see if I can get. That's great. Thank you. I just have it if I zoom in. <laughs> it's just pretty bad when you have to put a computer table. Oh, this is Bucky's figures. too. So, but they now allow yeah, cells. The, um, they would like you the to go into. No, the, it was fuzzy anyway. Yeah, it wasn't okay. great. So this is the location of like one of the two um, um, first schools in Bethel. Didn't, for years and years cool. You want me to tell you where it was? Or, um, but they have a great um, library. Or is that in the text? That's already in the I think the that's books probably in the... So okay, we, I described it's that. It's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, well, anybody, you if like, there, you know, it'd be about like 10 seconds on each of these of that they have like a clear room. image to. Okay. My daughter okay. So, this is so. The, and she's just starting next to Yeah. And I thought okay. I'd um, be on that. that actually, you might. And you know, Lisa, that one's not bad. Uh, you and Sue and I, yeah. I would like us to take a day trip. 
turn and go. There we go. The That's answer. better. Okay. I can't remember where it is. Okay. What, what is it? Uh, uh, actually, that explains what it is. Oh, yes, exactly. you know, that explains where it is? Is it down by this? Yeah, somewhere. Uh, no, I don't think it's Sunapi. I think it's more Laconia. I'm not sure. Okay. But it's a day cool. trip. Okay. okay. All right. All right. We'll I, and, and it's just, I used to get their catalogs. And, yeah. yeah. And that's a, a drawing by I think so. uh, this person. I don't get any anymore. Which was. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a quilt frame and I made yeah, 12 quilts right for my daughter, Hattie, Hattie E. Wilson. E. Wilson. And I. Who was an I, early I resident of Bethel? For somebody and Sweet. quilted it. Okay. Uh, the so that's the, um, the flowers. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Schoolhouse. Uh, that was the school. The. And I quilted um, it for her, and she wanted to pay me, and I said. The original. Just take what school you think it's worth on the common. Okay. The okay. And I would High school. Love to start the and then these. This is a picture yeah, of the yeah, same yeah. school. Well, I don't know. And this and was a, the elementary school that was built um, be, in the baseball field, <laughs> which they objected to. And this actually became a barn, was moved all the way out to um, the Locust Creek area. You know where that is? Out by Wilson's, uh, about, out by the Locust Creek Diner. They moved this building all the way out there, and it became a barn. Oh, wow. Actually, it was this building. building. This building, yes. Wow. And I had a picture of that. Let me find that picture for you. Where'd that go? Here it is. That's the barn. This building became this barn. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this building, I'm not sure what happened to that. I shouldn't say that for sure. Okay. So this is the Whitcomb High School, which was built by funds from Albert Whitcomb of $30,000. $20,000 was for the building of the school, and the other $10,000 was for the upkeep. And that's the, the drawing that was presented to the townspeople. How much detail do you want on that? Um, because this is a description of the building. I don't know if you want that or not. I didn't yeah, read the whole thing. See. But. I mean, I'll just put my camera on it for a couple seconds. Who knows if it'll come out as a... The green parts are what I read. Legible. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. This, these are the... Um, the Rural one room school districts of Bethel. The whole town of Bethel here is it, and it's divided into the various districts. So there were 13, I think. No, there were 15 because there were two schools in Bethel, the town of Bethel. So that's, that's the description, that's the schools. Cool. The outlying, and uh, there's more on the other side. Nice. Let me turn it over sure. so you can see the others. Yeah. Yeah, there's some remaining ones. Cool. What else? Oh, there was the fire. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that way or the other way? Uh, that's good, yeah. I didn't get to see that picture when you passed it around before. Ah, there's another view. Wow. And that's more. And a description of the... School reopens on Monday and three Bethel churches. Yeah, we did. I was in one of them. <laughs> oh, wow. What year was this? Um... 69, I believe, what well, says right there. i sure it was 69. Bucky did say, but. 1970, October, October 1970. Wow. Yeah. And 
and that was cleaning it up. And you know, you've seen the common where it is now. Yeah. You, you actually might want to take a shot of, of the, the cement part where they hold the concerts, mm -hmm. the cement square. That's the foundation of that building. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I taught down in the basement. Wow. You're still there, Mary. <laughs> I can go stand on my ceiling. <laughs> Does that cover it, you think? I think so. I think we got most um, of them. This is Bucky's too. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Can we get those uh, class pictures too? Yeah, that's, this is my, fir my first class of first graders. Oh. 1968. Oh, <laughs> that's so precious. And there was that, that's a that little square dancing class. I don't know if you want that or not. A little square dancing? Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah, let's, what the heck? Let's see. There's the square dancing. And then down Those, below is the... That was my class. Your class. Yep. The other class was a picnic. It's gonna get. Yeah. So I think we got them all. Those are the brownies. The brownies? Yeah. I actually have their names on the back, but I don't know if you want that or not. Cool. This is like, I mean, right, who knows? My guess is that like a lot of this might like I'm just getting this just so that the people in post production have all the options. Okay. But um right. but who knows if they'll actually have the time. Or right. It may not get it all in. Splice yep. any of it in. Sure. Okay. I think that covers it pretty much. Awesome.